case you didn't recognize me, that was me in this movie. I brought my blue coat. So, I want to have my talk about live logging. You were telling us a bit about it as well. The quantified self movement, that's a movement, a group of people that log everything in their life. There's anything you want to log in your life, you can do it. What you eat, who you meet, where you go, everything. So that's the thing I want to go uh, talk about. It's a continuous interaction with data. We're sharing data, we're sending data, we're receiving data. So I am data, but you all are data as well. It's the Internet of Things, where uh, products have built-in sensors that connect our behavior with the Internet and log it in big databases. So it's out there. It's big, it's hot, and I'm going to talk about it. This is a picture of my sleep cycle. This is the graph of last night. I had a good night's sleep, even when I'm here on this stage at this moment. I had a sleep quality of 84%. A sleeping app is, uh, make use of the movements, and it makes sure that it doesn't wake you when you're in your deepest sleep. But I'm, I'm, I'm always seeing what uh, on my screen, and I'm getting influenced by it. Because 84%, that's good. I'm feeling fine today. But what happens if it's only 50%? Do I feel less refreshed then? You can imagine that you can connect all things to the Internet and to get information about your body. You can use all the things there are. And it's, it's very nice to see you can put a, a sensor in your toothbrush that tells you how many rotations you have to make, but also if the quality of your gum is still okay, or maybe you have to work on your bad breath. So I think it's amazing that these things can be done. You can get information from your nail clipper, from your underwear. I don't know about that, but uh, you can. And even from your calm. So your calm is counting the hair you lost at night. So when to worry about hair loss? Probably the most common use of the Internet of Things is used in running apps. I presume there are lots of people here using running apps. They, uh, they receive data about distance, uh, about speed, about your heartbeat. But there are new technologies that even go further. They work as a sort of coach. They tell you to speed up or to slow down. And they even can tell you to put more pressure on uh, the ball of your left feet, foot for better balance. So you can use this Internet of Things in your daily life. These examples were for individual use, but you can imagine that it can be used for group use as well. Luckily, I'm not suffering anymore from asthma, but I know that there are inhalers that have a sensor, a built-in sensor, and they connect to the Internet to share information about the location where the inhalers are used. So uh, people, asthma patients, share this data and they know where there are areas with lots of pollution or toxic periods there. So uh, they can benefit from each other from sharing this information. I was really amazed to see the limitless possibilities of all those apps. I read about the Death Watch app. It works on, uh, it tells you how many, how many days you have left to live. So it works on an average age and life expectancy. But even you can put more information in there, like do I smoke, do I work out, and then you know how many days you have left. And I know that there are CEOs who are more productive using this app because they are aware how less time they have left. I think it's scary. And I will definitely not put this app on my phone. But it's, not, it's interesting to see that it's out there. And what about the domestic violence app? It works on the sound, level of sound, and on location-based information. So if one of the persons uh, are, is getting into a fight and, and he or she is shouting, 
this app uh, makes, um, uh, is aware of the level of shouting, and when it reaches a, a, a certain level, it looks for the other phone and uses location-based data, and then when the, when the two parties are approaching to uh, each other uh, very close and the shouting is still going on, the alarm goes off of this app and it says, whack, 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 time out. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but can it be done? For sure. So that's all illustrations of individual use or group use for the asthma patients. But you all know that companies will use your data as well. They will use your data on the floors in shops. And a few weeks ago, there was a lot to do about Wi-Fi tracking. Uh, companies used uh, scanning smartphones, connecting to the Wi-Fi, and learned about their customers. This is a picture about the difference between men and women in shops. You probably recognize it. Women need much more time and space to get their shopping done than men. So there will be very much, there is very much information on uh, customers in their path of purchase. There was a good example of Netflix using big, big data files of millions of uh, clients. And they matched up the most popular director with the most popular actor to uh, make this huge success of the series House of Cards. It's all, it's, it can be done, and, and I think we can benefit from it. But you also can think that insurance companies will use the data of the ESMA app, for example. Will they increase their rates in areas where there is a lot of pollution? Or will they decrease their rates in areas where the use of running apps is very high? We're not sure. I'm an optimistic person, so I think there is a lot of possible. Every new phone you will be buying, it has more sensors in it than the phone you have in your pocket now. So it's a spy in your pocket. Not only does this phone know when you take your phone out of your pocket by movement, but it, on, it, it also guesses what are you going to do with it. So I'm on the dam square in the middle of Amsterdam. I take my phone out of my pocket and it's already in camera status. And because it also gets information of the weather conditions, it puts the flash on immediately. I think that you will love your spy in your pocket so much that you never want to be without it. So we're gathering information. We get lots of data. And companies get all, all this data in big databases on the big data. So, but what does it mean? So they have this big pile of data. So what? Data is no information, and it's definitely not wisdom. If you want to have insights, you use the, the five W's. Who, what, where, when, and why. It, they are used in journalism, and we are using them in market research. And if you look at big data and the, and the analytics of big data, it's about the what, where, and when. That's very interesting. But what about the who and the why? Let's start with the who. Who is sending all this data? Is it the quantified self group who's sending all this data, who's taking all over the world? Or are it people, is it your target group? Who is sending this data? Let's do a test. Who in this audience has internet on their mobile device? Wow, should say 100%, maybe 98. So we're a, we're a group of geeks, I suppose, because we are conducting every year for seven years now, that's what's happening online research. And these are uh, figures from last year. Only 50% of the average Dutchman has internet on their mobile device. So who is sending this data? Probably not the average Dutchman. So data on itself is nothing. It's meaningless. Data needs a soul. I'm a strong believer 
of combining, observing, and asking. So we observe people. We observe them when they are in shops. We observe them by using eye tracking when they visit different sites uh, we want them to visit. And I'm looking forward to use Google Glass to observe our customers. But then, what do we have? Only observations? It's soulless. So you cannot, you cannot interact on insights uh, without knowing thing, what is happening. Why are consuming uh, consumers do the things they do? Why do they buy this product and not, not that? Do they really see what they are looking at? You have to ask them that. So no insight without in-depth information. I want to conclude my talk with a personal illustration. This is Mark. Hi, Mark. And we are sharing, and, uh, sharing lots of lots of information with each other. We send text. We use WhatsApp. We're sharing a photo uh, stream. We're sharing a calendar, uh, Google Docs. And we even call each other. We even use this app, Find My Friend. We can talk about that later if you, uh, if you like. So if you put all this data in a big database and you're going to analyze it, you will learn a lot about us too. So you probably think, you probably will conclude they must be lovers because the location at nighttime is either in his house or mine. And if you look at the data we are sharing with each other, you see a lot of hearts and dancing little girls. So you think, well, probably they like each other, they love each other. But the big question will always be why? Why do, does Mark love me? And that's the big question. That's the big question I'm going to ask him this summer on the 4th of July, the day we are getting married. Thank you. Thank you.